Polynesians, Dungeons and Dragons, Larry and Ivan, Magic the Gathering, Warcraft, Diablo, and Elder Scrolls. This list seems a bit random, don't they? But they all have one common element, mana. In any player's mind, mana is a bottle with a blue liquid or a blue status bar. But to determine whether or not you really need mana to enjoy a video game, we must first talk about its origin. Mana is a concept that originated in Polynesian mythology and religion. The word mana refers to a supernatural power. Centuries of cultural exchange passed as European scholars debated the true meaning of mana, until Mircea Elaide wrote a dissertation on yoga in 1933. Over the years, he further introduced the concept of mana to the West and continued to elaborate on it. A new age is coming. By 1950, baby boomers were searching for new concepts of spirituality and counterculture that would distance them from previous generations. With the rise of psychedelic centered cultural movements, the use of the term mana as something profound and spiritual connecting us all to a divinity became more popular. Little by little, other intellectuals such as Alan Watts continued to create books and publications with mana as the main protagonist. In 1969, the word mana finally consolidated within popular culture since Larry and Ivan, author of well-known works such as Ringworld or The Note in God's Eye, published a short story entitled Not Long Before the End. In this work, Niven described the world of the distant past, full of mana where wizards consumed it while casting spells until it was exhausted. The consequence of this was our modern world, with no magic at all. A few years later, in 1974, Dungeons & Dragons appeared. This was the first modern role-playing game that would mark a whole generation until today. Although it included the possibility of casting spells initially, these were limited and could be memorized, then cast and forgotten forever. So, a mana point system was unnecessary at the time. But, like everything in life, D&D was destined to evolve, mutate, and change. Sooner rather than later, many spin-offs and ecosystems revolving around D&D appeared, leading to implementing spell points, or even energy points, depending on who you ask. The dynamic was forged forever. Each spell requires a certain number of points to cast. While spell points mechanically made sense, it didn't make sense within the fantasy world of D&D. That's when Larry Niven's mana became popular. A D&D variant known as Arduin Grimoire was created in the mid-1970s by David Hargave and published in books. Hargave built a magic system with the help of Isaac Bonowitz. Isaac admired Mercer Elide and had a bachelor's degree in magic from the University of California. Thanks to Bonowitz's experience and knowledge, it allowed him to describe and create magic systems within games that were based on how real magic would work. The first role-play video games uh, Around the same time, one of the first video game versions of D&D was created, but it still needed to include mana. These early computers were mainly for military use, so it was not common to find computer in people's homes. However, a beautiful coinkydink was about to happen. David Hagrave and Isaac Bonowitz were more than just fans of D&D and Larry Niven. They also knew how to program computers. So, by the end of 1975, the first Dungeons & Dragons computer game appeared. These early versions of the game were somewhat basic when compared to the board game, so they did not include very complex spell mechanics. By 1980, gamers could enjoy a complex implementation of magic and spells. Initially, the games used this spell point system, but by 1983, Ultima 3 appeared, which used magic points, commonly abbreviated as MP. Final Fantasy also used these acronyms in 1987, but that same year, the video game called Dungeon Master made it clear that MP stood for mana points. The popularity of mana continued to grow, as by 1993, Magic the Gathering was finally created a trading card game that continues to be extremely popular up until today. Mana was a focal point of this game, where players had to harvest it and use it to activate certain cards, which was a clear homage to Larry and Ivan's Magic Goes Away series. MTG became so popular that it even inspired Blizzard, the studio in charge of launching Warcraft, 
Orcs and Humans, or Warcraft 1, in 1994. This is a real-time strategy video game with a spell point system measured by a green bar, which no one really identified. But by 1995, Warcraft 2 was released, which perfected the world and story of this game, including a blue magical energy bar. Warcraft and Diablo setting things up. A year later, in 1996, Blizzard released the first action RPG in history, Diablo. Diablo went a step further incorporating a giant blue orb that served to measure mana specifically. Legions of fans grew up around Warcraft and Diablo, which helped cement the word mana as a necessary new mechanic for fantasy video games. Today, Warcraft continues to expand through World of Warcraft and Diablo, with its most recent releases, both of which are loaded with mana. It is impossible to talk today about RPGs, online or otherwise, and games that take place in the fantasy world without talking about mana. But for Polynesians, mana is a fundamental part of their identity and heritage. For gamers, even in fantasy worlds, its use can be perceived as more optional. And gamers frequently complain about the number of mana points players can consume to cast just one or two spells. This interrupts the game's mechanics by having to stop the attack to ingest new mana potions or wait for the meter to recover. Additionally, these mechanics tend to be more complex, so certain more powerful spells may require a cooling time before the players can activate them. Although it is true that physical attacks can also consume stamina, if they are special or powerful attacks, it does not limit the ability to attack if it's depleted. So. Do you really need mana to enjoy video games? Um, well, it depends. If you want your character to specialize in magic and are willing to manage your resources to use your mana optimally, well, yes of course. But if the ability to cast spells is optional for your gameplay style, you don't need mana in your life. Or at least not that much. We don't deny the usefulness of restoring your energy, turning invisible, lighting the path, protecting yourself, or summoning NPCs that can attack for you at a given moment. Mana is definitely one of the most interesting mechanics brought into video games. So, in conclusion, mana may become necessary in some specific cases depending on factors such as story, game mechanics, gameplay, and personal preference. Still, as a part of your overall experience, the answer is it's not completely necessary. But hey, I'm more of a two-handed sword paladin either way. Let us know in the comments what your favorite fantasy video game is.